I'm right up the top of Scotland and Sutherland. Now this is somewhere where I've been filming for close to 20 years and I have to say it's one of my favourite testing grounds for testing cameras, lenses, all associated technology. I just love coming here. Now I've been testing out Vedra Cinema Primes. Now what these are is these are prime lenses built for the micro four thirds format. Now Vedra is quite a new brand. This was something that was started as a Kickstarter project and they obviously got the money together and they've been going as far as I know a few years now and they have a range of cinema lenses out, cinema primes. And while these are built for the micro four thirds format, it's not that they can only be used on micro four thirds. Vedra started as a Kickstarter in late 2014. We raised almost $300,000 on Kickstarter and the idea was mirrorless cinema lenses. So compact, very small, about 25% the size of a full frame prime. Uh, so very small, all metal bodies, all the same front diameter, 80 millimeters on every one of them, same front threads, all the gears are in the same position for every focal length. So that's kind of how Vedra started in the idea of compact, very high quality cinema lenses for not a lot of money. So they retail for about $900 to $1,000 a piece US and uh, yeah, you get a great value and tremendously high image quality because we don't have a really big image circle. We're really focused on the Super 35 for Sony E mount or Micro Four Thirds mount. I've been using them on Micro Four Thirds cameras. This is a Panasonic GX8, which is a nice small camera, which I happen to like quite a lot. People seem to know the GH4 a lot better, but the GX8 is a wonderful camera for shooting video and I've done a lot with it. In fact, I have two of these. Now, I've also been using it on the JVC GYLS 300, which accepts Micro Four Thirds lenses, so I can put the Micro Four Thirds Vedra Prime straight onto the LS 300. But they also can be made to work on other cameras. Now, this is a Sony PMW F3. Now, putting these Vedra Mini Primes onto the F3, they need to have an FZ mount. Now, if we just have a quick look, here we go. So this is a Vedra Prime, this is a 50 mil, and you can see that's got the Micro Four Thirds mount on it. Now, if I show you the ones I'm using on the Sony camera, the F3, there you go. You can see that's a very different mount. That's the FZ mount. Now these have been adapted by Mike Tapper, who I know quite well, and I regard him as the lens master. He's brilliant at building adapters. He understands lenses. He modifies lenses. Any questions on lenses, Mike Tapper is the guy that knows. He's the only one, in, as far as I know, that's actually adapting these for FZ mount. I really like the lenses just to start off with, just purely from a mechanical point of view, because they're they're really well made. The, the mechanics are superb, uh, and from an optical point of view, they compare really well with high-end lenses. Nobody's had a bad word to say about these lenses. Everybody that's ever used them absolutely loves them. So yes, it really is a question of getting the word out there. So many cameras now that have the Micro Four Third mount. You know, you've got your Panasonic Lumix cameras, you've got your Blackmagic cameras, uh, and now you've got the fabulous JVC camera, is it LS300, with the, you know, the, the multiple scan option on, 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 on the sensor. What that actually means is, these are very versatile lenses. They can be used on any Micro Four Thirds camera. They're also available for E-mount and they're also available for FZ mount through Mike Tapper. It all comes down to coverage, meaning how much glass there is to actually cover the sensor. And because these were designed with Micro Four Thirds in mind, the Micro Four Thirds native lenses, when you use them on the bigger sensors, the widest lenses of the Vedra range, meaning the 12mm and the 16mm, do not provide the coverage for the bigger sensors, so that's something to keep in mind. So, what do these lenses offer that you might not get from some other lenses? 
Well, let's start by saying what they don't offer. They do not have autofocus and they are not driven in automatic from the camera. So they only work in manual. And that's part of the charm of these lenses. For those that have grown up with manual lenses, those that absolutely love that glide of a smooth aperture, clickless aperture, and beautiful focus ring, which has markings. So if you want to do a pull focus, you can actually do it precisely. I will say they're harder to use than some of the other lenses out there that may have all the automatic features. However, there comes a level of skill and when you apply that to these manual lenses you'll find it opens up a world of possibilities in your cinematography. To me, too much freedom can actually be a hindrance. Now if you've got everything in automatic and you've got everything from a super wide to a super zoom, well these lenses offer something which is a little bit more restrictive but it brings out the best in the filmmaker. I would say it brings out your inner filmmaker. There was a time when we had no primes that would auto focus or auto aperture and auto everything. We had to do everything in manual. And if you look back on the films in those days, people made beautiful films. Now, okay, it's just a philosophical point of view, but I believe limitations help bring out the best in what you can do. Now, I've been shooting all week with these lenses, and yes, they're not the easiest lenses in the world to use if you're used to auto aperture and auto focus and auto everything. However, when you get the hang of these and you start filming and you start producing really good pictures that are really sharp and beautiful, you'll get to appreciate what it is that cinema grade glass offers you. And not just the glass, the housing. Something else that I really like about these lenses is that there's a level of consistency that you get with cinema lenses, which you don't get with some of the more affordable technology. First of all, the look that comes out of each of the lenses is the same. It all matches. You've got the same look in terms of coloration, in terms of sharpness, just the characteristics of the lenses match. So that's something quite important when you're doing high-end work. Beyond that, all the lenses are T 2.2. Now what that means, T stops rather than F stops, is they're more accurate. So there's a level of consistency with the apertures which you don't find on more affordable glass. And beyond that, it's just a small thing. But when I attach this to the camera, every time I look down, I can see exactly the line of where the T stop is and it all matches. Whereas using photographic lenses, particularly from different manufacturers, you'll find that there's all sorts of different inconsistencies. If they have a manual iris, well, it might be that one lens is different from the other with where you have to look, certainly between manufacturers, and a lot of them don't even have manual irises, so you've got to do it electronically, so there's a lot more messing around to do. So when you want consistency in the same look, Cinema Glass is something that does it for you. Now there's something fantastic about using these lenses on the JVC GY LS300. This camera has a Super 35 sensor in it. However, it's also got this wonderful feature which is called VSM. And this camera is quite unique, Super 35 sensor with a micro four thirds mount. So when you use the VSM, variable scan mapping, and this is JVC's own technology, which enables it to take a portion out of the sensor, which is lossless. So if, if you use these lenses, you can use them as native micro four thirds, and they work absolutely beautifully. Or you can use them using the full Super 35 mil sensor, which means that you're using a larger sensor with what's effectively micro four thirds lenses. That means that when you're using the 12 and 16 mil Vedra lenses, they work 
on the MFG part of the sensor. If you're using the other lenses and you want to use all of the sensor, I'm talking the 25, 35, 50 and 85 mil Vager lenses, then you can use the entire sensor. So you can use that to get a different look. It will affect the depth of field, it will affect the sensitivity to light, and it means that it's a lot more versatile. Not only that, when you're shooting an HG with the actual JVC GY LS300 and you put the variable scan mapping to 80%, which is for micro four thirds, you can basically use a feature which enables you to zoom through a prime lens and you get 2.3 times zoom through a prime lens with absolutely no loss in quality and that makes these lenses incredibly versatile on the LS300 because instead of being mini primes they become short mini zooms and that is such a big deal it means that you can really use these lenses to incredible effect beyond just using them as primes. Now obviously they're built as primes but on a camera like the JVC well you can use them to further effect. So even though these are prime lenses of very high quality and they're beautiful to work with and they're beautifully engineered they can effectively be more than just a prime lens depending which camera you're going to use it on. All the lenses have a 77mm mount, which means if you're using ND filters, if you're using any other filters, whatever it may be, you can just quickly change them from one lens to the other without having to worry about different filter sizes getting in the way of what you're actually doing. And they're all geared with teeth, so if you want to put a follow focus on, you can do that with the Vedra lenses. And the other advantage about these is this is cinema glass at an affordable price. Now these are six or seven hundred pounds each and in general cinema glass hasn't been what I use. I've been using a lot of the photographic glass out there. But if you want to really work with some level of discipline, these lenses work really well. They're beautiful, they're sharp and they bring out the inner filmmaker within you.